Alhamdulillah. So the Prophet وسلم, had uh, many animals uh, and treated them very, very well. He had ten pedigreed horses. Uh, Al-Itaq is uh, the horses that have this ancient lineage. Horses up until uh, not that long ago, there were horses still that had the pedigree of Muawiyah's horses and in the, in the Arab world. So the Arabs were very, very um, protective of the lineage of their horses. The, uh, the Europeans do that now to a great degree. There, there's horses that have sold for over $60 million. So it's still an, just the most expensive uh, creature on earth. I mean, really, it's amazing the honor that horses have been given. The Arabic word for horse, khayal, is from, it's related to the word, word for imagination. It's related to the word for pride, khuyala. Uh, and so the, uh, the horse was a source of Arabian pride. The Prophet ﷺ had beautiful horses. He was given horses by uh, people. Um, Tamim al-Dari gave him a horse that he later gave to Omar anhu. Um, his first horse, some say he had uh, nine. Awwaluh al-Sakbu al-Muhajjaru al-Agar al-Talqu al-Subqi al-Ladhi lahu ishtahar So the first was Sakib, which means the downpour in Sikab al-Matar and the idea of just a very fast horse. So he called it a Sikbu. Uh, and then the one with the white ankles, Al-Muhajjal, Ghurr Al-Muhajjalun, uh, is how the Prophet described his people on the Day of Judgment, because they asked him, how will you know your community? And he said he would know them because they were Ghurr and Muhajjalun. They had white for- forehead from the wudu, so their faces will have a lightness from the wudu. And Waba'a in Arabic, I mentioned that earlier, illuminations, it, Waba'a is bright. And so wudu gives the face a type of bright brightness. And so, so the muhajjal is a horse that has the white on, the, on the, the, uh, the feet. So when you see, or the hoofs rather, horses don't have feet. So the, uh, it has the white. So he was called an muhajjal. And then um, al-agar is to have a white fo- fo- forelock. And muhajjal al-agar. Al-talqu dhu sabqi. And so then... The next was uh, al-talq, which is swift or triumphant in race. And then, awwaru ma ghaza alayhi al-mujtaba bi uhudin faramizan muhaddaba. And then this was the first one that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, al-talq is the first one that he rode on in uhud. And he said it, it was always well groomed. What wardu, which is the one that he gave, uh, was given to him and then he gave to Omar radiallahu anhu. Uh, which means the rose, it was a sweet-smelling horse. Uh, and then the third was an Murtejiz, which is, Murtejiz means the poet, and they say the Prophet named him that because when he, when he neighed, uh, the, the Sahil, the Arabs call it, when he neighed, it had a, uh, a rhythmic sound, like, like a, 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 somebody uh, reciting a Irtijaz, Raja's poetry. Uh, the one whose purchase Khuzayma came forward to testify for on the Prophet's behalf. And I mentioned the other day that Khuzayma is the one that the Prophet ﷺ said was worth two testimonies because there was a debate about the purchase of the horse and Khuzayma testified on behalf of the Prophet and he was uh, the only one there. And the Prophet ﷺ, he, they asked him why and he said, I know the Prophet doesn't lie. So whether he saw the transaction or not, to him didn't matter. It was enough that the Prophet ﷺ said it for him to testify. The Prophet said, your testimony is worth two. And that's, he's the one that came with the, the last verse of the, uh, uh, from, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِرْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَرُوْفٌ رَحِيمٌ that, those verses at the end of Tawbah were the only verses that Zayd ibn Thabit could not find two people who had seen it written down in the presence of the Prophet and Khuzayma had seen them written in the presence. 
And so Hosema was the the one that the Prophet said was worth two testimonies. So those verses are in the Quran on Hosema's testimony. And then he says, uh, the pedigree, uh, the blanket, uh, and then المولاوح, the lanky, like he was very, very tall and skinny. Um, so he was called المولاوح. Barsu, which is the bite, he used to bite. واللزاز, uh, which is the tenacious, and ذاك sabihu. So the والسابحات سبحة in the Quran, the the sabihat are the war horses that go uh, riding. Um, and then, so those are the horses. And then he had ثم البغار كلها مروية. What's interesting is the the fact that the names are kept is another example of how much we know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, and, and just, we, I visited somebody in Jeddah and they have stables and over the thing was the, they had the names of the horses and one was a Sekbu. So the Arabs still named their horses after the horses of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So, and then, ثُمَّ الْبِغَارُ كُلُّهَا مَرْوِيَّا فِضَّةُ وَالدُّلْدُلُ الْأَيْلِيَّةُ So then his mules, all of whom have been chronicled, Fidda, the sil silver, Duldul, the porcupine, uh, al Duldu, and Duldul was given uh, uh, to the uh, the Prophet uh, by Muqawqas in from Egypt, and Thumma uh, Himarun ismuhu Ya'furu. Ya'fur, there's another Aifir also. Ya'fur, the Prophet rode him, and Ya'fur loved the Prophet when the Prophet ﷺ died, Ya'afur actually threw himself into a well and died. And some of his animals stopped eating and died also when the Prophet died ﷺ. But Ya'afur literally threw himself into a well. So um, it was just too much for him to... His purpose was to be the donkey of the best of creation. What after that would you want to live for if you were a donkey? وَالنَّاقَةُ um, الْقَصْوَى فَقَدْ مَأْثُورُ And of his she-camels, الْقَصْوَى And then there's, there's also different names for qaswa. Some say al-adba, which is the, the camel that the Prophet ﷺ لَمْ uh, uh, تَسْبِقْهَا uh, نَاقَةٌ no, no camel could ever outrace this camel. And, then, and, and the Sahaba were very happy about that. And then one day, the uh, al-adba or al-qaswa, some say it's the same camel, lost the race. And the, and the Sahaba were very upset about that because the Prophet's camel lost. And the Prophet Sallallahu said it was haqqun ala Allahi an la yartafa'a shay'un fi dunya illa an yadha'a. You know, that it's a right of God that nothing ever gets elevated in this world except that Allah will abase it. It's just the nature of the dunya. What goes up must come down. That's a qa'idah of the world. And so he was just letting them know that, not, you know, every, no matter how great a boxer is, Muhammad Ali, they're going to lose if they keep going. Uh, every great racer will lose their uh, ability to race. Uh, no matter h how good anybody is in the dunya, the time will come when they, it's the nature of the world. It's in the dunya, the time will come when they, it's the nature of the world. That's the way Allah has has written into the world. So, but it's known for certain that she was the one our Prophet rode on the famous Hijrah. And we know that Abu Bakr when the Prophet came to say, Udhinali, I've been given permission to make the Hijrah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, as Ya Rasulullah, am I the one to accompany you? And he said, yes. And he said, I have two camels one for you, and the Prophet said, I'll buy it from you. And he actually refused to take it as a gift. That is an indication of the, the Prophet ﷺ not using his position with his friends, which is very interesting, because friends, when somebody really, really loves you, 
you can take advantage of that. And the Prophet ﷺ was the farthest of people from that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He, uh, he did not ever use the, his position to exploit people uh, for worldly gain or any other type of gain. وهي التي امتطى بلا امتراء نبينا في الهجرة الغراء وكان لا يحمله إن نزل عليه وحي غيرها ونقلا. So none could bear the weight when he, if he was on an animal that and the wahi came, it would go. It couldn't stay up. It would literally go down, except for uh, al qaswa. It was the only uh, camel that could bear the the uh, the weight of the wahi. سَنُلْقِي عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا We're going to, uh, to thrust upon you a weighty word. So the revelation was very weighty, it was very heavy, but Al-Qaswa was able to, to bear the weight of the revelation when the Prophet ﷺ uh, was, was there. أَنَّ إِسْمَهَ الْجَدْعَاءُ وَالْعَضْبَاءُ So فَقَدْ تَرَادَفَتْ لَهَا الْأَسْمَاءُ Her name was Al-Jad'a as well as Al-Adba. So you'll see Al-Adba in that narration that, that uh, it, she never lost a race until that one time. Uh, so in that narration is Al-Adba. وَمِئَةٌ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ مِنَ الْغَنَمْ وَمَعَهَا عِشْرُونَ لَقْحَةً تُلَمْ So he had around a hundred sheep and add to that about twenty camels. What's interesting also about the Prophet ﷺ is the connection to life. He was milking his own animals. I mean, we tend to forget how related they were just to natural life, to the natural life cycles. The, the animals were in and out the house. There were sheep in the courtyard. Um, there were, there, there's a famous uh, story of, uh, I mean, one of the reasons why the alcohol was prohibited was Sayyidina Ali radiallahu had two camels that he was given for his walima and, and Hamza had, had some alcohol and he was a little inebriated and he came by and uh, he was listening to a pain, somebody singing about his ancestors and he got very very just filled with a lot of pride and he went out and he just cut off the two humps of these camels and Sayyidina Ali was just like he went out and he was like because you know, he was not a wealthy person he saw these camels he's like there goes the Walima and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu tried to talk to him but he, 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 he said something that was Prophet knew that he just wasn't in his right mind. So that was one of the reasons why that prohibition came down. So the, the, they, the camels were there. It was just really part of life. One of the things you see if you go to Cairo, you'll see literally carts with camels in the middle of this huge city. You don't really see that anymore in places people don't see. I mean, New York, you still have police on horses and things. But this used to be just part of life for people. They become alienated. I think one of the positive things about Western society is the pet keeping. Because it really teaches children to respect animals, to care for animals, to have emotions about animals. You often see a lot of animals uh, treated, mistreated in the Muslim world. I've seen cats uh, mistreated. Uh, I've seen dogs mistreated. If kids throw rocks at dogs. Really uh, unhealthy signs in a society when you have these types of things. So it's important to really inculcate in young people and that's why knowing that the Prophet Sallallahu not only had all these animals but he also treated them with such respect. He uh, na gave them names, he gave them funny names and he, uh, you know, names, really endearing names. And, uh, and they loved him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the animal, there are many hadiths about the animals, the bab, which is a weak hadith, but it's, it's a beautiful hadith. The bab who, you know, the poet said, Saramun ala man qala lil-dabbi man ana faqala anta rasulullahi anta muhammadi. The uh, peace be upon the one who the lizard was asked by him, who are you? And he said, you are the prophet of God, you are Muhammad. The gazelle also complained to the Prophet that was hunted 
um, somebody caught this gazelle and she complained to the Prophet ﷺ that she still had a fawn. And so the Prophet asked the Bedouin man to release the gazelle so that it could go and finish milking. And that to me is an indication of, in, the, in, in America for instance, we, there are laws during, during the mating season and after you cannot hunt because there are does that are still milking their fawns. And if you hunt during that time, you're, you're depriving an animal of its, of its mother. So the, these are uh, prophetic types of injunctions, really. Uh, very important. I mean, we have major crises in a lot of places. In Mauritania, for instance, the gazelle population is almost gone. It's almost extinct because they don't have laws about, and now guns are widely, when it was bows and arrows, the gazelle had a chance. But in a world where you've got guns with uh, high power, you know, t uh, telescopes on them and, and you can, uh, you know, shoot animals with ease, uh, the, these animals really go extinct quickly. So all these things are important to remember that uh, the Prophet ﷺ was teaching animal conservation, was teaching animal rights. The Prophet said, <laughs> May Allah curse the one who takes an animal as a, uh, an object of sport, like to shoot an animal just for fun. Uh, hunting is makru and maliki madhab. It's makru to go hunting unless it's out of need for food. Just as a sport, it's makru to go uh, as a sport to hunt. But if, if you hunt for a need for food, so the uh, the uh, the animals uh, that he ha he had the uh, also وكان يختص بشرب شاتي تدعى بغيثة ندرواتي he also had a, a shad that he drank from for quite some time called غيثة the one that غيثة is the one that gives you uh, Sakor or help in difficult times. Uh, he also had a white rooster, uh, as has been related. But he was not known to have owned any cows, although he did sacrifice a cow on the Hajj. But he did not own cows. He, there's no hadith that indicates he ever ate beef. Own cows. He, there's no hadith that indicates he ever ate beef. The Prophet says him, there's no hadith. The Ibrahim السلام, the Quran indicates that he served veal uh, as a meal. So he ijrin samin. He came with a uh, a well nourished veal. So he, uh, but the Prophet him did not. He said, "Luhumu uh, hadaun wa albanu hashifa." The meat of cows is uh, produces sickness. Uh, but the the um, the milk is a cure. It's it's a healthful drink. So the prophet indicated that red meat. Now I mean, we know that the, the the worst meat for health reasons is beef. And the prophet said, and that's a sahih hadith. It's considered ishkal amongst the ulama. But he said uh, that lhumu hadaun wa albanu shifa. The the beef is a disease producing food but the the milk is a healthful food it, it's a shifaz and if you have people that have lost a lot of weight milk is a very quick way of uh, getting people back uh, yogurt all those type things are good as a shifa but again to have a lot of milk dairy products is not a good thing the, the the best of milks are the sheep milk. We know that it's got it's it's uh, and also camel's milk, which are the two types of milk that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, drank. He also said, "Never curse a rooster." You know, some people like in the morning the rooster starts crowing. <laughs> he said, "Never curse a rooster because they're waking people up for prayer." So the rooster is a blessed uh, animal. Um, and and the Prophet ﷺ did have one. He also had, there were cats in the house, there were also dogs in the early period. Um, Aisha had a puppy dog. Uh, 
uh, Jibril complained about it, and the Prophet ﷺ did not keep any dogs in the house after that. But there were dogs in Medina. The type of attitude that m Muslims have towards dogs is completely unacceptable. Um, the, the three Imams considered dogs to be nejis, that they're, they're unclean animals. Imam Madik was a, not of that opinion. His proof to me is a stronger proof. Uh, the hadith, إِذَا وَلَغَ كَلْبٌ فِي إِنَاءٍ فَغْزِرُوهُ سَبْعًا If a dog licks in a bowl, clean the bowl seven times. Imam Madik said, had it been for najasa, he would not have mentioned a number. Because to remove najasa is just, whatever it takes to remove it. But the fact that he mentioned Saban, he said that it means it's ta'abud, that the wisdom is not known to us why we're told to do that. But Manakis have never had a, a problem with the dogs. And um, seeing eye dogs, I mean, I've seen, I know Muslims, there's Muslims uh, in our community, there's uh, who have seeing eye dogs. And when they come, it's like suddenly everybody becomes uh, which is not really appropriate for somebody who has a seeing eye dog. It's just not really a very nice thing to do to somebody because dogs are very beneficial. They're, they, they're also animals that uh, are guard dogs. Ibn Abi Zayl al-Qairawani, the great Maliki scholar, had a guard dog in his house and some people kind of complained about it. He said if Malik was alive today, he'd have a lion in his in his yard. In other words, things aren't as safe as they used to be. <laughs> so, if you have a, know a Muslim that has a... I had one of my teachers had a guard dog, and I saw with my own eyes, because I used to eat with him, and, and with my own eyes I saw this. He would take the couscous, roll, put it in his left hand, and feed the dog while he was eating dinner. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah. So, and I'm, I don't know anybody that has the wara of that man. I've never seen anybody that has the wara, the scruples of that man. Hafalullah. Uh, so, the, you know, dogs, just be nice to dogs. That's my message there. You know, don't, uh, the kalb al aqur which the Prophet said to kill, is like a rabid dog, a voracious dog. Um, but, but just the, 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 the dogs that, um, you see in the West, you know, really don't, uh, it's just, people have dogs. They're dog people and they need to become Muslim. They can become Malikis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they have a redneck bumper sticker. My wife, definitely. My dog, maybe. My gun, never. Right? So, and then the cats, somebody mentioned yesterday that the Prophet had a cat with a name. I don't, I don't know that. I looked, tried to find that, but I could not find uh, that. But we know the Prophet liked cats. He called them tawafat, things that live around the house. Cats are very good. They, they kill harmful animals, rats that carry diseases, snakes, uh, and, uh, and, and they're, they're special creatures. I mean, they, they just, they're amazing creatures. You can learn a lot from watching cats. The, uh, so there were cats in the Prophet's house. Some uh, in the Shafi'i Madhab, they have uh, more scrupulousness about cat hairs and praying with cat hairs, uh, things, like, things like that. So generally the hairs of the animals should be avoided as much as possible. You do have pets to pray with a rug that doesn't have the the, the hairs on them. <laughs>